4.2 we're going to remove fractions and decimals and parentheses parentheses another word for parentheses is brackets okay so we're removing brackets from equations now again brackets when we remove those we use the distributive property so what that means is you multiply what's in front of the bracket into the bracket so let's say i've got a two in front and i have an x plus three in the bracket this is what it's talking about how would I remove the brackets? I do it by multiplying the number out front into the bracket. So I'm going to get 2 times x gives me a 2x. Two, 2 times 3 gives me a positive 6. So you've got to connect with a plus sign because this guy's positive. Okay? So that's what the distributed property is. It's having something outside a bracket and then you're multiplying it in to get rid of bracket. Okay? So that's what that one's talking about. Now, if we want to talk about fractions or decimals, if we have a fraction or a decimal in our equation, what they tell us to do is multiply both sides of your equation by the lowest common denominator. And when you do that, that's going to remove your bottom. It's called clearing fractions. So we'll do a few examples like that. So once the bottoms are gone, and once the brackets are gone, then we add like terms. So combine like terms being add the objects that are the same. So you're going to add all the big squares together, you're going to add all the sticks together, and you're going to add all the little baby squares together. Okay, so remember they're different objects. Then we are going to use it, it's called using the addition principle. All that means is, like we did with that other question over here, is we are moving things across the equal side. That's called using the addition principle. What that means is to remove something, you need to do the opposite function and make a zero pair. Okay, that's what it's talking about with zero pairs there. All right, so constants, we take the constants to the right, the guys without X, and the variables, the ones with the variable, the letter X or any other letter, they go left, okay? So variables left, constants to the right, okay. Then what we do is we are going to try and make sure that our variable, or sorry, our coefficient in front of our variable x equals a positive 1. So that means we're going to solve our equation down to the very last step so that all we get is a hidden positive 1 in front of x. So for example, let's say I've got 2x equals 3 as a final answer. My last thing I would do is divide out what's in front of x divide it out. So x would equal 1.5. Okay? So that's what it's talking about by making the variable in front of x equal to 1. So that's what it means here is that coefficient, when you divide out the number in front of x, it'll become a 1. And that's what we want, the hidden positive 1. Okay? And then, of course, just like we did with that last question, we have to check our answers. Okay? So you're always going to check left side, right side to see if it worked. Okay, and then check your answer in the back to make sure it's good to go. All right, let's try example one. So example one has a bunch of different fractions. So whenever we have a fraction, x always sits with the top number. So right now, it doesn't look like x is sitting with anybody. He's just kind of beside the fractions. So what we would do to rewrite them is I would make sure that my x sits with the 2 up here. So I would have the 2x over 3. Subtract 1 over 6 equals 3x is on top of 4. So, taking a look, your x will go to the top if it's just sitting beside. Okay? So now we've got a 3, 6, and a 4. They're telling us here that we're using a common denominator of 12. They are exactly right. We are using a common denominator of 12. So, that means we have a bottom number now that's going to be a 12. Here they're just showing that it multiplies by 12. And I'm going to show you what's actually happening in each step. But we're going to do it our way up here first. So, what do I multiply by a 3 to create a 12? 4. So that means if I multiply that 3 by 4, I have to multiply the 2 on top by 4. So what's 2 times 4? So we're going to get 8x is on top of that 12. Over here, what do I multiply by a 6 to get 12? 2. Good. So we're going to multiply the bottom and the top by 2. So I'm going to end up with a negative 2 on top of that guy. And what do I times by 4 to get 12? 3. 
So I'm going to times the top up here by 3. So I'm going to get a 9x. So now it looks like this. 8x over 12 minus 2 over 12 equals 9x's over 12. At this step, this is where we call clearing fractions. Once you've converted the bottoms and the top numbers, remember, the top numbers didn't stay the same. They changed. Okay? So once you've changed those top numbers, then the bottom disappears. Then it's gone. Then you're only dealing with a normal equation. So, I'm going to flip-flop my equation, though. What do you mean by flip-flop? What do you think I mean by that? Flip it over. I want to change what yeah. hand everything is sitting in. So if I have a marker on my left of my equation, and a plenty X box on the right, I literally want to change them places. Okay? And if I'm changing them places, nothing changes about them. Okay? It's because it's an equal sign, we're able to do that. So I'm going to change the 9x to go to the left, and these two are going to go to the right, 8x minus 2. Okay, now I flip-flopped it. Now I want to get that 8x to visit the other x's on the other side. How do I get those positive 8x's to visit those 9x's? Subtract them. We've got to cancel out. So I've got to make a zero pair, remember. So you're going to subtract the 8x's. Now they're gone and they disappear. So now we're going to subtract 8x over there. So what's 9 subtract 8? 1. So we're going to get 1x equals negative 2. And remember that 1 in front of that is allowed to hide. So they've shown us absolutely every step up here. They kept it on the left. They kept the x on the left. But look at how many more steps they had to do. They had to do quite a few more steps because they had to take the 9x to the left, then they had to take the 2 to the right, then they had to divide out a negative 1. So they had to do three more steps than we ended up having to do, just by changing the size of the equation. Okay? And that's okay to do. Alright, let's take a look at another example. So, this one is just showing you the check. So example 2, I've got more than one thing sitting on top of that three. If I've got more than one term, that's a binomial up there. So because it's a binomial, I need to put them in brackets. Okay? So he's going to go in brackets. And now we're going to find the common denominator between a three, a two, and a six. What number will they all divide into? Six. Good. So is there one of the numbers that doesn't have to change? Yes. If there's a guy already that has a 6, that one won't change at all, okay? I still have grade 12 that did a fraction quiz on similar stuff than this, but way more complicated, and they're forgetting those little things. So you have to remember those little things now so you don't make, make those mistakes. So this guy here is going to times by 2, so we times by 2 to the top. What is 2 times by to get 6? 3, so we times 3 to the top. What does 6 do? Nothing. We don't change it. So that x still just has a hidden one in front. Okay? So now our bottom's gone. We don't have a bottom anymore. So now this is my equation. 2. 2x plus 5 equals 3 times 1 is 3 plus x. Okay? So that's what we end up with. Now we're going to multiply this guy into the brackets. Up. It's rid of our brackets. They're going to be gone in a minute. So how do I multiply 2 to 2? 4 x's. 2 times 5. 10 to positive 10, so I connect with plus 5. And it's all equal to what we just had there. 3 plus x. Alright. That's where we are right here in their steps. Okay? Now what do we have to do? Who has to move which way? Where is x moving? To the left, and where is this 10 going to move? To the right. All right, how do I move that 10? Take away 10, subtract it. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 10. Do I subtract 10 to the 3 or the x? To the 3, the guy that doesn't have a variable. Okay, so it's like a matching game, guys. you got to match the things that are identical. So the guy without a variable can only add to the guy without a variable. Okay? So, this guy's going to add the negative 10 there. So, this guy disappears over here now. 
So now we've got 4x equals what's negative 10 plus 3? Negative 7 plus an x. Now I have to get this x all the way over there. How do I make it move? I subtract 1x. He's a positive here, so I have to do a negative. Okay, now he can disappear on this side. So now I have to subtract 1x over here. So how many x's do I have now? I have three of them. So that's what we're getting, our 3x equals negative 7 down there. Okay? So we're at 3x equals negative 7. What's the last thing they did here? They divided by who? The 3, the dude in front of the x, because they want x by itself. So that means they ended up with negative 7 over 3 is an answer. They're showing the negative sign right in the middle, but remember, it will float to the top number. Okay? All right. It's not wrong if you leave it in the middle. It's fine. As long as there's only one negative sign, you're okay. All right. Let's try another one. This is the check. So we're doing the left side, right side check. Okay? That's what this part is. Now we're going to deal with some decimals. In example three, decimal city. All right. Thank you. And we're doing the exact same thing. We're going to take the ones without x to the right. I always think I'm backwards to you guys. Take the guys without x, the constants to the right, variable x to the left. So well, let's circle some of those. We got an x right there. So our x has to move to the left. So that's why they subtracted it. But what are you noticing they're doing here? <laughs> They times it by a thousand. Why do you think they times it by a thousand? They multiplied it by a thousand, but why do you think they did that? To get rid of the decimal place. So how do they multiply it by a thousand? Why do they just multiply it by ten or a hundred? Where did they get the thousand from? Exactly. So the guy with the most decimal place is in the thousandth place. That's why they chose to multiply it by a thousand. Do we have to do that? Nope. But will it help us? Yes, it'll help us big time if we don't have a calculator. So it's a good non-calculator strategy. But since we have a calculator, we're just going to do it our normal way. Okay? So we're not going to do it this way for now. This is a good non-calculator strategy. So I want you to put non-cal strategy. Okay? So that's a non-calculator strategy that we'll talk about again. All right, so we're going to take our basic one. I'm going to rewrite it down here. 0.002x plus 0.05 equals 0.03x. Move all that over. Minus 0.006. Okay. I'm just going to move it up. So this is our equation we're starting with. And we were told we're going to take our x to the left to add to the other x's. Okay? So we're going to subtract this guy. Okay? Because he's a positive, we're going to subtract him. So do the work just beside it, okay, if you can. So we're going to subtract it over here. We're going to subtract 0.03x. Okay? So now in our calculators, we're going to type that in. We're going to type 0 0.002 subtract 0.03. Okay, now how big do we get? That's okay. I will do it. Okay, that's okay. 
Today we're going to get negative 0.028x. We've got to bring our other guy down. Plus 0.05 equals negative 0.006. So at this step, if you like to do the box method, you can use the box method because x is moved to the left. So it'll totally work for you. If we want, we can just do it the other way with inverse operations. So I'm going to move that 0 0.05 to the right-hand side. But why would I move it over there? I'm doing it for a very specific reason. Why would I move that 0.05 over to the right? Because you can't add it into the x. Exactly. He doesn't have an x, so I can't add it to this guy. So that means i got to take him to the other side. So we're going to subtract 0 0.05. And then we're going to add the right hand side up together. So that's going to give us negative 0.028x equals negative 0.056. Okay? And it's the exact same method we are going to divide by what's sitting in front of x. So the one connected to x beside it, we're going to get rid of that guy. We want x by itself, so we're dividing by the 0 0.28. 0 0.028, negative. And we do it to both sides. And we'll get the exact same answer they did. We're still going to get an answer positive 2. So the negative divided by negative will give us a positive answer. This number will now disappear. We're going to get x equals 2. Okay, so we get the exact same answer regardless of which way we do it. Okay? That's why there are multiple ways to solve these questions. Okay, I'll give you a moment to write that down. So as you can see, they've done the check to prove left side, right side up here. Now we're going to look at example number four. Example number four has everything mixed into it. It's got brackets and decimals. So before we can even start, we've got to get rid of this bracket. So we've got to multiply that number in. Okay? Now, again, what they've done, what have they done? They've multiplied by 100 or however many decimal places to get rid of the decimal. We're not going to do that. We're just still going to solve it with a decimal. Okay? Because it can still be done that way. And it'll take us way less steps to get to the answer. So, let's move the question down. So I have more room. Hopefully you guys have some room on the left-hand side. Okay. Okay, somebody shoot. What's the equation? 0.09x x plus 10. Is it this one right here? Yeah. Equals 20? Okay. That's exactly what it is? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's get rid of that bracket. So we're going to multiply it. So the first part of our equation stays the same, 0.09x, full lossing, and then equaling 20. So now we're multiplying into the bracket here. So we're going to get 0 0.013x plus 1.3. Okay? Now we're going to take the number without the variable. Who doesn't have a variable? 1.3. We're going to take that number to the right-hand side. So how do I take a positive 1.3 to the right? Subtract. So we're going to subtract the 1.3 here. We're going to subtract 1.3 there. Okay? All right. No? Okay. 0.09x plus 0.13x equals, what's 20 minus 1.3? Right? 18.7. Does everybody have that? Okay. Now we're going to add the x's on the left. So 0 0.09 plus 0 0.13, 0 0.22. So we have 0.22x's equals 18.7. Oh, okay. All I did was yeah, add the x's. Yeah, I just added those and got that. That's all I did. I added the numbers in front. 
So now we're going to do last step. What's our last step? Divide out the guy in front of x. So 0.22. We're going to divide out 0 0.22. We're going to get a big number. Yes. It's going to be exactly 85. And that's the answer they got. They said x is 85. They are right. But they took way more steps than we did. You look at how many steps it took until they got the right answer. Or 83 instead of 85. There we go. 85. Are you following how to deal with the decimals? Fairly okay? Okay? All right. Let's take a look at Frosty's mistake. He made a mistake. Dun, da, da, dun. This is in that one page, those little pages I gave you. Okay, this is that extra handout you have. Okay, grab the extra handout, guys. And we're going to look at Frosty and see where he made his mistake. See if you can identify it. Has anybody found the mistake yet? Okay, I'll give you a minute to look at it. Okay, let's take a look at Frosty's mistake. So, we have a couple different steps here. Steps one to six. Where's the first mistake you think? Step three, you're exactly right. So what went wrong in step three? That's right. So remember, there's always one thing we always tell you with equations. You've got to keep it balanced. If you do it to one side, you can now unbalance it, unless you do it to the other side. So, he has taken and added 7.8 there, but he didn't do it on this side. That's the mistake, so it's step three. So, remember, he's trying to remove the number without the variable to the other side, which he's trying to do, but he forgot to add 7.8 there. So we found the error, it's in step three right there, but now we're gonna solve the question. So that's gonna give us, with the 7.8, that's gonna give us 20.1. So now it's gonna be 20.1 divided by three, which is 6.7 is what they should've got. Okay? Was everybody able to see that they didn't do this to both sides? Yeah. Yeah? Good. Okay, this concludes lesson 4.2, solving equations.